Hey guys, this is Goofer King Science, and today I want to show you a project that I've had going on in the background for about two years now. It's taken so long because I've been slowly collecting all these expensive parts for it. The project is a fusor, or a type of fusion reactor that uses inertial electrostatic confinement to create fusion on a small scale. Sometimes it's called a star in a jar. I haven't actually achieved fusion yet, but I'm getting very close. So in this video I'll just be doing what I call a dry run where there's no actual deuterium or fusionable materials inside of the jar. First let's explore how this works. A star is basically a giant fusion reactor and it's a large body of gases. All those gases become compressed in the center of the star by all of its gravity and this creates very high temperatures. Eventually the gases can become ionized and they'll fuse together. A fusor, or IEC, inertial electrostatic confinement fuser like this one, substitutes out the large gravitational force in a star for electric charges. So what you do is you have an outer grid and an inner grid. The outer grid you charge positively and the inner grid you charge negatively. On the positive outer grid, atoms are ionized. Since electrons have negative charges, they're ripped off of the atoms that they're orbiting around, and now the atoms are just simply positively charged nuclei. Now they are attracted to the negatively charged inner core where they rush to the center. This can create temperatures and collisions high enough to actually produce a fusion reaction. In the future, I'll be using a much more powerful high voltage power supply, but for right now, I'm just using my oil burner ignition transformer hooked up to my Variac. This puts out about 12,000 volts AC and it's rectified by a bridge rectifier of microwave oven diodes. This puts out around 15,000 volts DC and that's enough just for a demonstration run of the fusor. The vacuum system starts at this JB Platinum DV85N vacuum pump. This pulls an initial pressure that allows the turbo molecular pump to be started. To learn more about this turbo molecular pump and how it works, check out one of my previous videos where I actually showcase the turbo molecular pump itself. Right now, the pump is simply connected with a rubber hose. This is not ideal, and I have parts in the mail that will allow me to connect it fully metal and fully with KF flanges. Over here, we have the turbo molecular pump drive unit. This is what actually powers the turbo pump. On top of the bell jar, I have four electrical feed throughs. This bell jar originally had a hole in the top. I sealed it with epoxy and added four 12 gauge copper wire feed throughs so I can feed electricity into the vacuum chamber. Inside the chamber I have the outer and inner grids. The outer grid is made up of mesh wire and the inner grid is a twirled pattern of steel wire. I'll probably use a different pattern when I'm actually trying to achieve fusion, but this one just looks really cool for now. Now for a demo run of the fusor. After the high voltage power supply is turned on and the roughing pump is turned on, we begin to see the plasma spread around the coils of the inner grid. The plasma slowly spreads as the vacuum gets higher and higher and this is about as far as the roughing pump can get by itself. Now it's time to turn on the turbo molecular pump. At this point the turbo pump is turned on and the plasma begins to change. Instead of hanging out around the outside of the grid, it begins to concentrate in the center and become a more and more tightly confined ball. There's also an electron gun shooting out the bottom, which is kind of interesting. You can see it becoming more and more compact. And at this point, the glow is filling the entire chamber, although the camera doesn't pick it up. There's quite a bit of shaking going on, and I need to fix that. You can see the plasma beginning to extinguish, and right there, it went out. The vacuum is so high that we no longer see any plasma discharge and that ends the run. Now I know I'm going to have a lot of questions on this so I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. When you're working with high voltage and high vacuums there's always a risk of x-rays. However there are no x-rays being produced by this test run. This is because I was only running this at around 5,000 volts. While my high voltage system could put out around 15,000 I only needed 5,000 for this demo run. When you start getting above 15,000 volts and you have really high vacuums that can be produced by a turbo pump you have a risk of x-rays. When I'm actually going to be trying for fusion, I'm going to have careful radiation monitoring with a Geiger counter and I'll have lead shielding. But right now there is little to no risk of x-rays being present. You may have noticed some white flashes on the recording when the chamber started to get to high vacuums. And while these do look like what x-rays look like on a camera display, they were not x-rays. These flashes were actually visible in real life and I think they were just some random sparking that was going on. So those weren't actually x-rays. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really happy about this Fusor setup. Hopefully in the near future, I'll actually achieve fusion. That'll be really exciting. 